telling you that uh, uh, Sofia Shinas was at uh, her first uh, cinematic appearance and she was very unlucky. Uh, this uh, wonderful uh, actress who played the role of Shelley uh, when Brandon Lee died uh, refused uh, to keep on playing in the crew and she returned to Los Angeles at his home. Another actor uh, who didn't come back in the set of The Crow was uh, uh, the um, mythical uh, actor Ernie Hudson, who played the role of the policeman uh, Albrecht in The Crow. Uh, he had a uh, morning because uh, his uh, brother-in-law died and so he had to go to the funeral and so on. But uh, he was also, uh, there was also a friendship with Brandon Lee uh, shooting uh, uh, the movie The Crow. So he didn't return, first of all, for uh, the morning of the death of his brother-in-law. So he abandoned the set. After two months after the death of Brandon Lee, where everybody uh, were completely uh, still in shock, uh, they didn't know if uh, going on or what to do due to the insistence of the mother Linda and of the fiancé Eliza Atton who was uh, uh, assistant at the production convinced the crew and uh, uh, the other uh, actors remained to end up the movie The Crow. So uh, the remaining actors played with a double of Brandon Lee. Even Michael Massey came back uh, in the set to finish the movie uh, but then after the ending of shooting the crow he fell into depression and now I know that you want to know these curiosities about the crow I'm talking about the uh, remaining uh, scenes uh, after Brandon Lee's death um, played by the double. And now I immediately tell you which were the scenes played by the double and a uh, stuntman. I go first just in the first scene in which Eric Draven uh, resurrects from the tomb thanks to uh, a crow and uh, uh, he returns for the first time in his apartment um, then they cut the original scene. The original scene was Brandon Lee uh, was walking in a alley under the rain. Instead 
said, of course, that part was cut and replaced with this one. Uh, when there is the real brand on Lee, uh, the, um, the double, when there is uh, the real brand on Lee, the scene starts when he had been resurrected while he's entering the door of his apartment. And uh, to justify the fact that uh, Eric Draven was uh, completely uh, drenched in water, um, they show him while entering the door of his apartment and there are drops of water coming from the eye uh, due to a perforated uh, pipe. And so, this was uh, the uh, how to justify the fact that the actor was completely soaking wet. And all the remaining scene instead in uh, which uh, Eric uh, remembers with a very great pain and suffering his death, the rape and the murder of his loved Shelley. Um, and even the scene in which it is said that uh, uh, Michael Massey, who played the role of the pitiless uh, fanboy, uh, really uh, shot Brandon Lee to death. Uh, the scene was completely uh, reshoot with Michael Massey with the double of Brandon Lee. And then our return on this scene about uh, some very interesting curiosities and uh, unspoken truths. So, um, another scene, the scene where Eric Draven uh, makes himself uh, is uh, making up uh, his face was um, was completely shot by the double and uh, um, suddenly you can glimpse uh, the real face of Brandon Lee in a broken mirror and this scene um, had been added later. Then, um, the two parts in which Eric uh, plays the guitar on his apartment roof, uh, those scenes were completely played by the double. Then, the scene in which Eric avenges and prepares the death trap uh, for T-Bird fooling his uh, uh, car with explosives is completely uh, played by the double. In fact, if you notice, Eric doesn't speak as Brendan Lee in all the movie used to, used to do. And uh, it's not... Uh, um, it's, mm, it's not... Uh, um, the shooting of the scene um, 
the reasons the clear face of Eric Draven and the instance in which you see the real face of Brandon Lee uh, belonged to a scene shot, really shot by Brandon Lee before dying. So with the help of computer, they uh, took that expression of Brandon Lee and they cut the scene where uh, uh, the real scene in which Brandon Lee uh, had that uh, expression and uh, with the help of a computer put uh, his face on the double. So in the instant in which you see clear the real face of Brandon Lee was the face of Brandon Lee, but uh, but uh, thanks to computer applied with this software computer with this program. Um, then when Sarah uh, goes to visit the apartment and there is Eric Draven notice that she uh, sees Eric Draven the back uh, but not in face and it was completely played by the double then when uh, when Eric Draven after having killed Skank Eric um, Eric rushes on the roofs to escape from the police and uh, he is uh, helped all that scene was shot, was uh, played by a stuntman. These were all scenes without Brandon Lee. And now you can ask me, what about Michael Massey, the, uh, the unlucky, uh, pretty unlucky actor who shot Brandon Lee to death and he was completely unaware that that gun had a real bullet. Uh, unfortunately, Michael Massey died, uh, um, died on October the 10th in 2016 um, because of a cancer in the stomach and uh, it is said also that the cancer uh, extended to his brain and he died only at 64 years leaving his wife and two children so Michael Massey was a victim because he was completely unaware about that damn gun and then he, he died young. But when, uh, when uh, of course, unintentionally pulled the trigger uh, that caused the death of Brandon Lee, while he was playing the role of the cruel fanboy, the actor was at uh, his uh, very first uh, cinematic uh, appearances and uh, then uh, he fell into depression. But it wasn't the end of his career. Of course, 
he couldn't be the protagonist of the movie. He always played in very, uh, in many very successful movies, but he wasn't the protagonist. But I want to tell you that he played in, uh, in many movies, like, for example, two years after The Crow, he, uh, he played a small part in seven 1995, uh, that is also the movie Seven, a cult with Brad Pitt, Morgan Freeman, Kevin Spacey, Gwyneth Paltrow. So it was a very great movie. And then he played in the masterpiece by Steven Spielberg, Amistad in 1997, in the game, the game, the famous movie with uh, uh, Michael Douglas, uh, Chopin and many others in 1997, Catwoman in 2004 with the amazing Halle Berry, and uh, in, uh, in many TV series, and uh, also in uh, The Amazing Spider-Man in 2012, and The Amazing Spider-Man 2, The Power of Electro in 2014. Then, unfortunately, he lost uh, his... Uh, battle against a terrible cancer. And now, it's normal to wonder to um, all the people who are intelligent, who are intelligent, can't help not to wonder these, uh, these uh, very intelligent and important questions. For example, why didn't Brandon Lee was rescued immediately when shot to death? Because mm, And other questions, excuse me, why did the mother Linda, uh, the, uh, the fiancé Eliza Hutton and then the sister Shannon, uh, above all the mother and also the fiancé, remember that the movie, at the end of the movie, that is dedicated to Brandon Lee and Eliza. Eliza had to get married with Brandon Lee 17 days later his death. Because, as I told you, he, uh, he died on March the 31st, 1993, and uh, she had to uh, marry their, where their wedding was fixed. They had to get married in Mexico, or in Mexico on April the 17th. So, why these three, the, the most three women close to Brandon Lee, uh, didn't want to uh, investigate this uh, case, didn't want to, to go deep in this uh, strange incident that uh, also at that time sounded, sounded uh, creepy, a creepy 
it was full of creepy wildnesses. Why? Um, it is also said that uh, um, the true video uh, where uh, Brandon Lee was uh, uh, wounded to death has been completely destroyed. So, uh, so it is said that people, that police, can't analyze the video to see the movements of the crew, of the staff, of uh, the expression of the faces of the people who were in the room at the moment of uh, uh, Brandon Lee's fatal shot. It is said that it has been destroyed and other people instead say that the, only the police has this top secret material. And next, I know the truth. I will reveal you which is the truth. I tell you uh, that uh, um, uh, the three women, above all, the mother, Linda, and the uh, girlfriend, Eliza Atton, uh, thought that it was better uh, to have a compensation of, for example, the mother, three millions of dollars than a, uh, than a denounce and then a trial only for negligence. Uh, I tell you the truth, I don't judge anybody, but this uh, only negligence, uh, better translated in at least an intentional manslaughter, uh, caused the death of Brandon Lee only at 28. It was only a negligence that caused uh, the, the crash, the breaking of a very expensive vase or painting. We are talking about a life, uh, the life of a human being, because first of all, Brandon Lee wasn't only an exceptional, extraordinary actor. First of all, he, he was a human being and he had a brilliant future above him because he wanted, then I read you, he wanted to become a drama actor, to be a complete actor and of course he would have won the Oscar. He wanted to get married soon, in fact a few days after the ending of The Crow with his laughed Eliza Atton and immediately he stated that he wanted to become father. Eliza Atton wasn't pregnant. But uh, Bruce, uh, Brandon Lee, in his uh, last interviews, stated that he wanted to be proud to become father soon. So he had all his life before his eyes. And this only negligence caused his death. And on April the 3rd, he was buried in a cemetery. Uh, there was his funeral. And instead, on April the 17th, the 17th there should be his wedding. I, I, I'm shocked. Other people
people say let's resign ourselves. It was only a little incident and these incidents in movies are not rare at all. Are they talking with idiots? Think about that uh, since from the death of Brandon Lee on the set of The Crow, only in only few years ago, um, um, it seems 2021, it happened that uh, terrible tragedy uh, with that uh, even that uh, gun was loaded with real bullets and uh, um, the actor um, was aware and uh, uh, because his wears he was completely aware, in fact, there wasn't any motive to kill somebody in a movie that uh, uh, the plot was also very interesting and Alec Baldwin is a very great actor. Alec Baldwin unintentionally shot and killed a person before this gun for negligence, for other motives, police uh, is investigating so, investigating, so this is police uh, uh, work and not mine. But what I wanted to say is that we uh, didn't talk about real weapons in movies from the time of Brandon Lee in 19, 1993, a similar, a similar uh, um, tragedy happened in 2021 about. So it's not so as they, as they, as many people stated. Uh, a little incident not rare in the movies. If this kind of incidents wouldn't be so rare in the movies, in almost all the movies you watch that famous actor, then the other famous actor, actress, one by one all the Hollywood uh, actresses and actors would be almost all dead. Instead, we always watch movies that are shootings, uh, violence and no dead people. So it's not so... Uh, it's not like they say, not so real. It's normal. Do they think to fool? Maybe stupid people, but not people who have been investigating for years for Brandon Lee's justice. And I was telling you, of course, about uh, 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 both the Lee, uh, Bruce Lee died only at 32 and Brandon Lee died only at 28. But now I'm going to keep on reading those acts and then showing you very, very rare videos, official videos, because I want to stress and scream loud that uh, Brandon Lee has been, um, has been killed 
It has been a murder for sure. And this can't be. He, 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 he didn't have to remain buried in that cold grave where a crowd every 31st of March flies asking justice. And I can tell you, forgive me if I put in this position, I am a crowd too and uh, I don't accept injustices. So I go on justice for Brandon because it was a murder, not incident. So I go on. Um, people um, had been mistaken about uh, this uh, news because um, in, uh, in, in, in his last interview, um, a few days before dying, Brandon Lee explained the reason why he wanted to get married so young, because he was still the, the idol of, of, not also of the fans of martial arts, but uh, all the teenagers, uh, girls, everybody fell in love with Brandon Lee. So he didn't have the fear to break the heart of his fans because he wanted, he laughed so much. Uh, her fiancé, Eliza Hutton, that immediately he wanted to get married with her. So in this, uh, and then I will make you see in videos, his last interview, few days before dying, he quoted the passage uh, from the novel The Sheltering Sky of 1949 by Paul, ba Paul Bowl, a novel uh, that talked about animation and existential despair chosen for all the uh, wedding's guests. He sent this quote in the letters of invite at his wedding in Mexico. And this, uh, this passage I'm going to read you um, uh, was the explanation why he wanted to get married uh, soon with is laughed Eliza Hutton. Unfortunately, this uh, quote wasn't anymore for his wedding, but it's inscribed in his tombstone. It's very sad. I read you the passage. Because we don't know when we will die, we get to think of life as inexhaustible. Well, and yet, everything happens only a certain number of times, and a very small number of times, and a very small number, really. How many more times? Will you remember a certain afternoon of your childhood? An afternoon that is so deeply a part of your being that you can't even conceive of your life without it? Perhaps four or five times more? Perhaps 
Not even that. How many more times will you watch the full moon rise? Perhaps 20. And yet it all seems limitless. These were, um, this was what is inscribed on his tombstone and instead it was the invite letters to the wedding's uh, guests. About this, about who wanted Brandon Lee dead? Any, any hypothesis? An hypothesis. The revenge of China's mafia, the same that killed also his father, Bruce Lee, I don't get it. Because the explanation was the display of martial arts. Stop! Brandon Lee is not absolutely uh, the only one, and also Bruce Lee, who practice, who have practiced martial arts in the movies. But think about that Brandon Lee was close to leave martial arts because uh, uh, he wanted uh, to uh, concentrate on uh, dramatic movies to show his ability as a complete actor and uh, he could uh, shoot some uh, action movies but um, he wanted uh, to put aside martial arts so I don't see the motive. Other hypotheses gangsters or uh, drug gangs belonging to Hong Kong. No proof. I don't see any motive. I want to remind you that the crew on the set of the crow were among 75, 100 people. And uh, at the hospital, uh, while uh, he was uh, in, uh, he was uh, undergoing that uh, surgery uh, operation, they found that real bullet into his uh, abdomen, stomach. He was transported in urgency. Uh, and uh, after six hours of emerger emergency surgery, uh, the, um, the doctors did the impossible to save Brandon Lee's life. I tell you what they did. Uh, they uh, tried to repair the extensive vascular and intestinal damage and stem bleeding that was so severe that Lee was, in the end, eventually transfused with 60 pints of blood, the equivalent of a full supply for five grown men. Then Brandon Lee had been moved to trauma neuro, neuro intensive care unit. He never awakened and died at 1 3 pm um, with Eliza Atton at his side. Other theories about his, his death. Not only the cars of the Lee's family, but also it is said, and I will show you uh, those videos too, that uh, the movie The Crow 
since the beginning of the shooting there was that movie was cursed that was the curse of the crew um, but uh, then um, above all after the statement of Michael Massey who died a few years uh, later for that terrible cancer and uh, in 2009 then 2018 uh, um, uh, as I just told you the Brandon Lee's case wasn't closed was still an open case and the waves started to move so these are uh, these were statements already in 2021 uh, somebody um, even people who had been still investigating Brandon Lee's death for for even 30 years stated that according to these new investigations Brandon Lee's death had been plotted by an unknown enemy um, there were uh, there were at least too many people in the scene where Brandon Lee had been shot. Michael Massey immediately said, I pulled that trigger. Of course, unaware that it was loaded with a real bullet. Nobody had a motive. There were, and he said, it's not so, because I will show you really shocking official original videos and I can tell you there was there were motives to want the death of Brandon Lee but uh, I in my humble opinion not uh, Chinese Mafia Hong Kong gangsters mm, mm, no 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 there's something uh, more uh, more torbid I have videos eh, sent to me and other people can have those videos because these uh, documents and these videos are not censored okay you have to work very much to have them but uh, mm, it's not impossible to ask and to, to have them because they are not censored they have been also published in rare pages and uh, uh, i think that many vloggers journalists reporters didn't want uh, uh, preferred that the truth remains mm, unspoken even if it's not top secret at all I'm not revealing you top secret documents I want to stress that I'm not paid for shooting these documentaries and uh, I I haven't top secret uh, documents and videos all the videos so I wonder why why people don't do their job in the right way I do it even if I'm not paid ah. um, they say there, wa there wasn't any motive they always tell you always China's mafia and so on my, in my opinion no in my humble opinion of course and uh, 
Think about that in the moment in which Brandon Lee was shot to death, there were dozen and even according to a witness, I will show you, of course, uh, the police uh, as his name, his face, but for uh, reasons of privacy, this witness uh, is, of course, obscured. But I will make you see and hear what this important witness stated about Brandon Lee's death on the set, or, to be more specific, wounded to death on the set. In the moment, uh, um, at the moment of Brandon Lee shot to death, there were dozen, then they say, from 75 to 100 people, And also, of course, the director, the screenwriter, but also camera operators, lighting experts, producers, many employees. It is said that all the team, the actor, Brandon Lee himself, they were super exhausted by the impossible rhythm of job. They, especially Brandon Lee, woke up, but also the crew, woke up at 4 a.m. and they finish at 9 p.m. This they, I don't know how they could uh, play in, 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 in really impossible conditions. And uh, only eight days missing, uh, it is said, only three days missing uh, at the end of the all seas, but maximum only eight days missing, missing for the ending and production of the crew. And uh, all the crew, Brandon Lee, uh, people who had to uh, overwatch the safety of the set, they were completely worn out. And uh, according to these precious witness, but also other uh, uh, witnesses like employees, I will show you, stated they not at all. Uh, they they kept on watching, overwatching the eyes on the gun that then killed Brandon Lee. And moreover, there was so much confusion that and uh, people who entered uh, the cast uh, went out. Uh, people of the staff, they even didn't know each other perfectly. So, in all this terrible confusion, if there was an enemy, knowing that the scene they were going to shoot, the only people shot had been only Brandon Lee, and that gun was destined only to Brandon Lee, quickly could have easily the gun quickly could have easily been taken and loaded with real bullets. This is the, um, what the witnesses uh, uh, stated. So, too many coincidences in this movie. How can you think that it was any incident only for negligence? It was, in the best case, in the best, unintentional manslaughter, but 
could have been as the uh, last results of the last investigation, even a plotted murder. Other curiosities, at the, at the beginning, the crow was based on the comics by James O'Barr and they thought to shoot a musical movie where Eric Draven had to be played by the first choice, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, who had been killed in 2009. Then, when they decided not to do a, a musical movie anymore, the first choice was Johnny Depp, then Christian Slater and many others. And in the end, the choice was Brandon Lee. Even the role of Shelley, uh, Eric Draven's loved girlfriend, the first choice was Cameron Diaz, but Cameron Diaz refused. So, second choice, the unlucky Sofia Shinas. So, it's normal that you wonder in front of I'm just talking to you. Why? In the beginning, the mother Linda, the fiancé Eliza Upton and sister uh, denounced the production, at least for negligence, that could uh, be a, an intentional manslaughter and were involved. At least seven people refused to go on in exchange for compensation in money. It's inconceivable, according to me, of course. Uh, I was just saying that the family retired the, the nouns for negligence or intentional manslaughter exchanging the trial to, re to retire the, the nouns so the trial had been cancelled in for a compensation of at least the mother millions of dollars. I don't say that uh, the people I want to stress I'm not saying that the people who had to go on trial were guilty they could have been completely innocent. Uh, in the American uh, formulation is not guilty. They, they were, uh, maybe they were completely not guilty. But, uh, uh, and the judge could claim them not guilty uh, about all the allegations but I think that it was better a trial and verdict and verdict of the jury and of the judge than retiring the news in exchange of million dollars. I don't judge anybody, but I think that Brandon Lee deserved a trial on his terrible death. But we are still on time because, uh, fortunately, in the United States, uh, cases are not uh, closed so easily. And, and the case of Brandon Lee has never been closed. But even closed cases, if you bring new proofs, uh, all can be reopened. So, fortunately, I believe in this uh, justice. Uh, denied at that time because of this agreement out of court. 
but uh, we are still on time. As Steven Seagal told you uh, from 2000, and told you at the funeral, I will show you in an interview in 2018 and then a few months ago. Steven Seagal, I will take Brandon Lee's killer. So, um, I think that Brandon Lee has all the victims of murder. They want just one thing, justice. Justice. And uh, we don't have to fake to be stupid. It wasn't an incident. It was a murder. And I'm not afraid to pronounce the word murder and justice for Brandon Lee. Uh, in uh, the last uh, investigations uh, uh, that uh, started uh, again, above all uh, uh, in um, waves uh, were rising in 2009, 2018 and from 2021, um, the investigations uh, about Brandon Lee um, kept on uh, strong, uh, kept on going stronger than before. As I told you, what Brandon Lee wants is justice, because I want to remind you and I will show you that a real crow every March the 31st walks on the tomb of Brandon Lee but never touches the tomb of Bruce Lee always walks on the tomb of Brandon Lee this is uh, Brandon Lee or uh, a crow sent by Brandon Lee and I will show you two photos in which that crow will fly on his tomb on every uh, 31st of March because he's asking justice I want justice and when Brandon Lee will have soon justice. When Brandon Lee will have soon justice, you won't see anymore that crow on his tomb because he will fly finally in heaven. Uh, I want uh, to remind a song by the mythical Finnish band 69 Eyes. I am a fan too, of course. Uh, the title is Brandon Lee uh, from the album Blessed Be, uh, released in 2000. And I want to stress these, uh, these sentences of the song. What uh, would there be beyond the eyes of Brandon Lee? Could there be a revenging, a revenging angel left to bleed? Wanted the truth, wanted the faith more than anything else in this world. I agree with these sentences. And now I'm going soon to show you videos you won't believe in your eyes.